Okay, so here's your next experiment, a uh, study of projectile motion. And the goal of this one is to roll a marble or ball across your desk. And it's up to you to make a measurement where you can determine what the speed of the ball is as it rolls and goes flying off the edge of the desk. And if you know that speed, and you also happen to know the height of your desk, you should be able to make a prediction of how far away the ball is going to land when it hits the ground. So when we do this in the classroom, we use these uh, U-channels for tracks. We can prop them up either on a stack of books or whatever it is and let it roll down. And then we can reproduce a consistent speed as long as we don't bump this track and change the angle or um, yeah, certainly we wouldn't want to one time release the ball from only this high and another one this high. If we always maintain the same angle and we always release it from exactly the same height, then the ball should always have a consistent speed. So we can take multiple measurements so we can have a good average in determining exactly what the speed is as it goes off the edge of the desk. So maybe you can uh, replace that U channel I'll leave it up to you to come up with some way to do it. If you have a couple sticks, you can separate them by a little bit and the gap between the two makes a track that the ball can travel down. So that would work just fine. Another um, caution is not to make it too steep. In fact, I probably don't want two books. I think with one book, I'm gonna be better off. Now the reason for that, if the marble or the ball goes too fast, um, the time it takes to pass through two points is going to be so short that your reaction time becomes a significant amount of error in the measurement. So we don't want the ball to go so slow that the amount of rolling friction becomes significantly large, but we also don't want it so fast that it's hard to time. So that's another thing I'm going to leave up to you. Not only do you have to determine what you're going to use for a ramp, but you've got to kind of figure out for yourself what's that Goldilocks zone for the speed of the ball. Uh, that makes it easy enough to time, but not so slow that uh, friction or air resistance becomes a significant force. So, I'm going to slide the whole thing back a little bit, and that's going to uh, ensure that I provide enough distance down the table that I can put two markings far enough apart that'll make it easy to time. So, you don't have to put the mark at the very end of your ramp. The other mark doesn't have to be at the very edge of the desk. You just need any two marks, and they can be any distance apart. And because I happen to have a meter stick, I'm, I'd like to make the math easy and choose convenient distances. So I'm gonna put one piece of tape at the zero mark, and obviously another piece of tape right at the one meter mark. And I'll put the, when I measure it, I'm gonna measure from the middle to the middle of each piece of tape. So that ought to do it. So now I have two markings on my desktop at a known distance. And then I'm gonna reach for my cell phone. And on all of our cell phones, we have a stopwatch function. Let me find where it's at. Oh, perfect. Okay, so sure, you can just use the stopwatch on your phone. And then let the marble go, and you know what to do from here, right? As it rolls, start, stop, and you'll get a time on your stopwatch. You don't have to actually let the ball fly all the way off the ramp, and it's gonna work out better if you can have a partner help you out. Maybe you have a friend roll the ball as you do the timing, or vice versa, you can roll it and your friend can time it, but it probably works better with two people. I'll demonstrate it as I do it by myself. Roll it again, again, releasing from the exact same height so the speed is always reproducible. Start, stop, don't have to let it fly. In fact, it's probably better if you catch it before it does go off the desk so that your prediction of where it lands on the ground isn't based on what you've seen, but strictly based on the measurements that you took. Okay, so from there, once you have several measurements of time, you can take the average time. If you divide the distance by that average time, 
Now you know the speed. If you'd use a yardstick or a tape measure to measure the height of the desk, from that height measurement, you can make a prediction of the time that the projectile spends in the air. And if you know that time along with the horizontal speed, you make a prediction of range. At that point, you want to grab a piece of notebook paper. Okay, so with your notebook paper, fold it, uh, not like a hot dog, fold your paper like a hamburger. And uh, if you could be so bold, you can draw a dark line across that fold. And so we'll consider that line on the paper the target. Now I'm just going to pretend I've gone through the calculations and I take my tape measure. I've got to find using a plumb line. You can hang a string with something heavy off it from the edge of the desk so you know exactly the point directly below the edge of your table and make a mark on the ground from there and then measure out the predicted distance based on your mathematical calculations, and then put that target line right at your predicted distance. Now it's back to your cell phone, and you want to go into uh, video recording, but in slow motion, and you're going to have your camera in slow-mo, or somebody helping you, point it straight at the target line on the ground. So this is the last time you release it, again, from the same height you used when you were measuring speed. Don't let it bump into the pen sitting on your desk, obviously. And it'll fly through the air and ideally hit right at the target. But if it doesn't, because you've captured it in slow motion, you'll be able to play it back and see in the playback exactly where the ball hit the paper relative to that uh, fold line. And that becomes the amount of discrepancy in this experiment, and in the end you can calculate some percent discrepancy. If you do a good job and you're thoughtful about all your measurements and you take good averages, uh, you should probably come within less than 5% discrepancy in an experiment like this. So that's the goal, um, we'll see how you do.